suspense. Hello, welcome back. Or if this is your first time, welcome. In the last video, we determined it's probably the best idea to make a jig before I start cutting all this stuff apart. That way I can bolt the jig up to the car and be sure that all the mounting points are gonna be in the correct location. I think this jig turned out pretty good. It's got the rear subframe, and then obviously in the middle we have the trans mount here, and then the front subframe. So my plan is, when I bolt up the rear subframe, this one is gonna be an open hole because I still need to cut off this whole side of the car, right? And that is this mount right here. That mount isn't bent, so it's in the correct spot still, but everything around it is bent. So my idea is to use the stud from this half cut, and I want to put this stud into this subframe hole, because that would ensure that that stud and the whole half cut is in the correct spot on the car when it gets welded on. This is the trans mount and the trans mount bolts to this, the trans tunnel. Right here. So with the trans tunnel bolted up and this stud bolted up, the trans tunnel will connect right here. So that will literally ensure all of the dimensions needed. Plus, additionally, I went ahead and made a reference mount right here. This is the width. So that is going to connect right here. It's technically a jack point, but don't ever use that as a jack point. It'll just fold in your pinch welds. Yeah, so I'm so excited because I, the vision has really come together and my next step now is just removing this half of the car. All right, so right now what I need to work on is getting this piece off. So I'm gonna have to drill out the spot welds that attach it to the frame here. In order to cut off the entire half of the car, I'm gonna also need to remove the frame rails from the floorboards. So I'm gonna have to grind away all the adhesive here and all the spot welds, so I'll do that at the same time. All right, so we got all the spot welds exposed on the top. As you can see here, little dot, little dot, little dot, little dot, all the way down there. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna just knock that out real quick. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that real quick. There we go. Here's a nice comparison. That is that. I'm still shocked on how thin these frame rails are. I definitely want to like reinforce them, like now that I know how thin they are. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> so now that we got this section off, what I want to do now is start peeling up the floor because I have already drilled out all of the spot welds that are along the frame rail, all the way up to the firewall. and. We're gonna have to cut off the firewall anyways, eventually, so I'm not even worried about that section right now. So I need to separate the frame rail from the rest of the floorboard. 
Well, this isn't working too well. So I think what I'm gonna do is just cut down the middle of the trans tunnel here, and then we'll peel back the floorboards on the other side of the frame rails. Look at how crunched the trans tunnel was. This is crazy. I can't wait to put the new one in. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Woo! Another big piece. Anyone need some rust free floorboards? Let me know. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm really liking all this progress that we're making. And if you're liking it, feel free to drop a like on this video. That'll help a lot. They actually go a long way. And I like to hear from you guys, so just tell me what's going on, tell me what you think. And I also do have merch available, if anyone's interested. I'm not going to push it on anyone, but it's there for whoever wants it, so. Alright, let's get back to work. <laughs> get in, let's go! Wow, straight up Flintstone mobile. So at this point, the space is now cleared where I want to put on the jig. So the jig also has the front subframe on there as well, which means I'm gonna have to drop the front subframe on here. Future me, I hope you fix this car because it's pretty beat right now. It's funny, this is the rustiest part on the car and also the newest part on the car. <laughs> If you haven't seen already, it's the second video after the crash, but the tension arm bracket that was from the crash was just obliterated. I just think it's funny that that's the newest part on the car and the rustiest part on the car. <laughs> Alright, before I drop the subframe, I need to disconnect the steering shaft and then also the electric power steering lines here. Man, these were really fun to put in under the car. It's, it's even difficult on top of the car without an engine. <laughs> Alright, we got the power steering lines off, as you can see here. And these lines actually run all the way to the back of the car. And they come out right about here, up to this pump. I've made a power steering video about like how I made this kit and everything. So if you wanna check out how you can make your own electric power steering, I'll leave the link to that video in the description and then I'll also like attach it to the video or something. But yeah, it looks pretty cool. All right, we got the subframe bolts off and now let's lower it all down. So now that we have the bottom of the car completely stripped of all subframes and trans mounts and most damage, <laughs> um, we're gonna slide the jig under here. I just have it like balancing on a tipped over jack stand up here. Nice. All right, I'm just gonna start a couple of these by hand. That's really satisfying. We're getting somewhere. All right, there we go, that one's ready. Start that one by hand. Can't really start this one yet, can we? 
I'm gonna leave those loose right now. I don't want to like blast them up there with the front still sagging because I don't want to like twist anything that's on the jig. So we got these finger tight back here. So I'm gonna let the jack down. It's gonna sag a little bit. That's fine. Now we're bringing the jack to the front. Now we gotta try to line up these studs right here. All right, we got that side started. Start the bolts. And I am gonna tighten these ones just because the rears are already started. Now I kind of had a feeling this was gonna happen, but the other side of the subframe does not line up too well. And it looks like the frame rail has been pushed in probably about an inch from where the mounting points are. Once I remove the bent firewall from here and maybe even the shock towers, it's gonna be a lot easier to spread this frame rail over to where it needs to go. All right, now we'll blast the rears on. But man, it's looking sweet. Oh yeah, here's the, you kind of see this little purple tick mark right here. That's where the edge of the frame rail is supposed to be. So I'll have to get like a spreader and like move the frame rail over a little bit while I'm welding everything back together. Man, I'm so hyped on this progress. Can't stop smiling. It looks crazy like this. <laughs> I'd say we definitely made some great progress today. Got it on all four jack stands and we got the jig installed. I'm really looking forward to start putting some straight parts on this car. <laughs> get in here. Hi. <laughs> we should drive my car. Okay. Whoa. That's better. <laughs> so I've been noticing that at high speeds the car gets a little bit unstable. Well let's take it apart and see what's going on. Let's do it. Probably some old bushings under there. All right let's go. Tightening up the shui bar. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! It's a boy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Putting some old skateboards to good use. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Yo, Papa Wheelie. <laughs> Let's see how your bushings look. That one's not bad. Not bad. Oh, that one's toast. 
All right, let's try and get them out now. <laughs> what method should we use? Ta-da! I got the last one out. Whew, I kicked my butt. <laughs> so here they are, all four outer races, all four inner bushings. And now we have this nice clean opening where we can now put new bushings. So the new bushings that we're putting in, we put in the freezer because when things are colder, they're smaller. So the bushings we went with are these two piece poly bushings with a metal insert. We went with the poly ones instead of the solid ones because we didn't want the drivetrain noise to really interrupt the cabin noise because this is more of like a OEM plus build. So we want to keep it still stock-ish but be able to handle well when it needs to handle well. So I just put a little bit of anti-seize on the edge. This is the edge that will enter the subframe. All right, we got the bottom one in. Now we gotta put the upper one in. And a good way to know which way is top from bottom is the top one has like a smaller lip on it. If you use the smaller lip on the top, then you have like a 15 millimeter roll center correction. That would raise the subframe higher than it would be from the factory, which is better for handling. So we're gonna do that. Oh, some splashed out. <laughs> All right, got all of them in. Now we'll just swoop this back in. <laughs> Amazing. Should we take it for a test drive? Yeah. All right, well, I'm glad that went well. Now we're gonna check out the front suspension. All right, so since we have the car in the air, a good thing to do is shake the wheel around and see if there's any suspension play. And it feels tight, but while I'm looking at the tension rod, um, there's actually some play that's happening within this bushing here and by the looks of this bushing it is nasty dry rotted so franzi is gonna have to order some new tension rods well we decided we might as well do an oil change while we're going over the suspension under the front It's actually not too bad.
What's going on with your head? <laughs>